Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the boat gang. All right, we got the Delta Force 35 out here at the New River. Sketchy spot. All right, going to be uh, basically testing out a new prop. I just finished up balancing, sharpening, shaping, polishing. Okay, this is the ABC 1716. All right, uh, running a TFL Stinger, um, large turn fins, OSE dual pickup rudder. Uh, to, in this video, we're basically going to be talking about uh high versus low kv my opinion i've had a lot of guys ask me about that here lately beginner builders what they should put in a boat low kv motor versus high kv small prop versus big you know um running a 1350 kv spectrum motor this is an 8s capable 4685 with a ztw 200 okay uh some hcl hp 6500 150c smc packs 4s twins all right qs8s i've got a flow pack rx cat pack backing up my receiver so i don't get any glitch in my rudder with a gps hopefully i went through the gps i found some corroded wires so uh, i got it all cleaned up hopefully it works stick around big b we're gonna let rc As for the low KV, big prop, high KV, small prop question, one of my, a few of my subscribers has asked here lately, if you're a beginner and you're building a boat, okay, I would recommend going with a lower KV motor, okay, uh, with a moderate voltage for that motor, say you got a, just say you got a, 1650 kv motor and it's rated for 8s run the boat on 6s to start off with run the boat on 6s to start off with you know fill the boat out with that lower kv motor uh put a moderately sized prop on you can always prop up later on okay um yeah you're going to get longer run time with a lower kv motor hence the reason why most racers go with a lower kv motor and they they basically use larger pitchier props okay uh with the lower kv motor like i said you get longer run times um you can prop it up the only bad thing about low kv motors and propping your boat up is you can only prop any certain boat up only so much so make sure the kv you go with for your boat isn't too low okay uh you, there's a there's an equation type deal you can you can use uh kv and to get your rpm you know kv per volt and it gives you your your rpm and kind of go from that uh fast electric boaters usually try to stay in you know racers leisure boaters try to stay in that 30 to 35,000 rpm range if you're doing speed runs that's a different story uh lower kv motors versus a higher kv motor okay higher kv motors your run time isn't quite as long okay uh you have to run smaller props so you have to make sure your boat's propped right and um higher kv motors they i've i've burned a lot of high kv motors up so if you're you know if you're an experienced boater and you're building a boat higher kv motor go with it you know but if you're a beginner i recommend a lower kv motor and it really depends on what size boat you're running to you know i've always tended to run higher kv motors you know only because uh, I, I kind of like going fast, and I and I really, I really like running smaller props. You know, um, now big props are freaking awesome, but I like to turn the mess out of a little prop. You know, high RPM. But when you're running higher KV motors, smaller props with with borderline voltages, oh, you uh, you tend to stress your motor and electronics out. You know, that's why I say if you're a beginner boater you know or um, you're thinking about getting into racing or you're doing ovals lower kv motors is going to be your ticket moderate larger props uh i like doing ovals every now and then i like i kind of like doing speed runs but i'm not a, a, a genuine 100 percent speed runner so i pick higher kv motors that uh that'll give me good speed when i'm ready to go speed running But also give me, uh, also they're low enough to where I could turn some ovals if I want to. You know what I'm saying? She's wanting to go crazy there. I hadn't run this boat at the speed run spot with this new setup. 
so uh, I might actually do some tuning here you know now smaller boats smaller boats typically have a higher kv rating for smaller motors you know like a 20 17 20 24 you can get away with uh oh let's see two 2500 to 4000 kv range you know uh with proper voltage you know what i'm saying bigger boats like a heavy boat like this or a heavy boat like the dominator there you're going to need a you're going to need a, a lower kv motor it depends on how heavy the boat and everything is you know and what you're doing with it really it's a hard question to answer you know it really is it's too choppy out here so she's chine walking so i'm gonna bring her back i'm gonna drop that right trim tab down a little bit all right okay let's see how that does well, that's a little bit better got a south southwest wind today and we got some little ripples on the water much better got a, about a degree degree and a half positive angle on my stinger that's what i like to run on these boats with ride pads doing speed runs yeah we got a little breeze that's picking up i was hoping it would subside you know yeah um and it, i guess with the with the motor kv and size and everything you know uh i've noticed well it ain't no secret long can motors are better for speed you know uh period they, they have a higher rpm basically you know um yeah yeah a little bouncy today Yeah, so if I were to put a really big prop on this boat, all it's going to want to do is, is chine walk and torque roll, you know? Um, that's why I say you don't want to go too low with KV, man. Low KV is good, but you got to have a freaking KV that matches the, and prop that matches the boat, you know? And a lot of times, you, you know, if you put a low KV motor in, you can always volt up. You know, instead of uh, propping up, you know, just got to make sure the motor will handle it. It's actually not too bad. That's a small prop. This is a 1350 kV motor with a 1716 on it, which with this motor on my Blackjack 42 and this same prop, I was getting 75 miles an hour, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, catamarans. Catamarans, I, I've noticed you could put a higher kV motor in a catamaran uh, because they... They get up out the water a little bit more they have less less hardware less in the water so you can get away with a higher kv motor on a catamaran than you can with a mono hull you know um and i've noticed with hydroplanes like the ul19 it it kind of likes low kv motors because it you know you would think put a high kv motor in a in a, in a hydroplane but I, I don't know man that motor's working real hard to keep the back of the boat up you know keep the you know with the with with just the propeller it's working real hard keeping the back of the boat up unless you got it balanced out perfect you just man or whatever but i've noticed lower kv motors and in, in hydroplanes is kind of the ticket too opposed to a high kv motor that high kv motors get hot you know oh that's pretty good run oh that was a good run That was a pretty nice run. Yeah, I put this motor in this boat so I could put a big prop on here. But this ZTW 200, <laughs> it's not, it's, it won't handle a big prop. It wants to power cut. That's another thing. Uh, if you have high KV motors, high KV motors pull a lot more amps than a low KV motor. So if you get a high KV motor, you need to make sure your ESC is going to be up to the task. Okay, uh, you don't want to put an ESC on a, any particular motor that's going to be underpowered. Okay, motors pull amperage 
from the ESC. If the ESC don't have the amperage to give that motor, it's going to get hot. Okay, you're going to stress out the MOSFETs, get hot, and burn it up potentially. You know what I mean? So that's another thing. If you use a high KV motor, you got to have a good, a good ESC for it. You feel me? A good ESC for it. Make sure it's about, oh man, at its maximum amp draw, you know, posted by the manufacturer, make sure it's about 30, 40 amps higher. Especially if you got a high KV motor and you're planning on putting some aggressive props on it. That's going to pull even more amps. You know what I mean? Um, that's what, one of my biggest mistakes when I got into the hobby. I would, um, I would put some high KV motors in my boats because I like speed. But I wouldn't put an ESC in the boat that was capable of handling the amp draw from that motor. So I, I burn up quite quite a few cheap RCs in my day. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm just jacking my jaw. Some of this stuff, it may not even be right. I, I might not even know what the hell I'm talking about. But I'm just talking from my experience with RC boats. I'm not a racer. I'm not a dedicated speed runner. I'm just a hobbyist. Likes having fun, sharing the hobby, and I like helping people out. Full trigger. I could definitely put a bigger prop on here. This is 8S, man. Probably getting in the 60s, you know? Probably should have put that damn 1916 on here instead of the 1616, but I, I'm not really dealing with power cuts right now, you know? With this damn ZTW, man. She got a pretty right attitude. I dropped those trim, uh, trim tabs down and she's running good. I think my best with this boat is 70. It might even be 72, if I'm not mistaken. It took me a year owning this boat to get in the 70s, you know? And I actually had the motor in this boat to get better than 70 for that whole year, but I didn't have the ESC capable of handling that motor. I, was, I had a TP Power 4060 1900 kV motor in this boat with a fly color 150, OSE 150. That it would handle it, especially on 4S. It would handle it great. You throw eight, uh, 6S on it, and um, you, you know everything would get hot as hell. I'm just telling you what I, what, I, what I found. That is so damn pretty. One of my favorite boats right here, man. One of my favorite boats. I built this boat. It's actually been, it's actually been through so many changes in its lifetime. It, it's ridiculous. All right, so that's my battery. All right, let's bring it back. I ran that whole pack through it. See, that's what I'm talking about. A low KV motor, propped right, you get a long run time. I mean, what was that, 10, 11, 12 passes? I don't even know. But you get a great run time with a low KV motor. And you don't have to worry about amp draw, you know, especially if you're running smaller props. Smaller props, they're not gonna give your boat these crazy, crazy, uh, handling characteristics which if you're into speed you've got to run big props there's no question about it pitchy aggressive props you know and you've got to tune fine tune you got to fine tune your boat for those big props you know there's you know there's a lot to it you guys there's a lot to it you know there's on these monos i recommend mono holes for a beginner you know they got all kind of goodies all kind of tuning options back there you know and and not not to mention you know weight distribution blueprinting your boats to add speed blueprint your hardware polish your hardware don't be afraid to to hit your rudder with some uh high grit sandpaper smooth it out you know because when these rudders come from the factory you could see you can see well you can you could see the the CNC marks up and down. I, ha I hadn't blueprinted this rudder, but it needs it. Okay, even the nice Speedmaster rudders, they need to be freaking blueprinted. You know, uh, get off any any uh, imperfections. You know, oh, no smoke. All right, so it's a low KV motor, small prop. Our, our temp should be 66 mile an hour. So it worked on this boat. Yeah, 121, 122. The ESC is 122. We ran the snot out of it. You know what I'm saying? Everything's good. Oh, I got a 185 on my wire right there. 183, 174, 
Yep, that's another thing. With high KV motors, you need to make sure you have big enough bullets, big enough battery connectors to handle that high current pull from the motor. You know, uh, high 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 KV motors pull a lot of current, and if you uh, if you're running, just say just say a TP Power 4060 2300 KV motor. Okay, that that motor is going to pull over 200 amps. And if you're trying to pull 200 amps from, just say this 200 amp ESC, everything's gonna get hot. If you don't have the connectors, big enough connectors that handle 200 plus amps, which by the way, if you're pulling 200 amps, you're gonna need eight millimeter connectors, eight millimeter QS8, EC8, eight millimeter or better, okay? Six millimeter, I think that flows about 165 amps, you know? Uh, so you just gotta make sure everything's built and thought. It's a it's a thinking man's hobby, you know? It's a thinking man's hobby. You know, that was one of my problems before when I first got in, you know, for a couple years into the hobby, uh, I would power my ES, my motor, I started powering my motors right, but I was still using small connectors. Everything was still getting hot. As soon as I upgraded connectors, everything cooled down, you know? So um, hopefully my jack and my jaws helps you guys out. It was kind of a uh, answering some questions I had from some of my viewers, you know? Um, hopefully it helped you guys out. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for watching. Big B with Ironclad RC.